The ability to travel through time, to change your past, to see the future. It's been a dream of mankind for thousands of years, but the truth may be more than just fantasy. There is evidence that time travel is not only real, but exists today, controlled by an elite few in the present and visitors from the future. It is a power great enough to affect every life on our planet. If you travel back in time and you bump into somebody on the sidewalk or step on an ant, that the butterfly effect tells you that that in itself could alter humanity and alter history. But what happens when it falls into the wrong hands? What if somebody goes back in time before the evolution of the human race? What if they altered one species of animals that plays a role in our evolution, but we just don't know that connection? Those little types of effects could absolutely wipe out the human race altogether. It kind of sounds far-fetched, but if you think about it, those little types of changes, if you were able to achieve time travel, could potentially wipe us all out. From catastrophic weapons of war, to cryptic messages from the future. Tonight, we explore the greatest power of our entire existence. Join us as we unseal the secrets of time travel. What if the history you were taught in school was all a lie? Is our government controlled by a secret society? Welcome to the world of conspiracy, where cover-ups, secrets, and hidden agendas all trace back to a single source. We're about to unseal the secret files the government doesn't want you to know about. This is Unsealed, Conspiracy Files. 1941, war is raging in Europe. America has yet to join the fray. In Gold Bridge, British Columbia, the South Fork Bridge is about to reopen after repairs. Hundreds of citizens show up to witness the event. In one photo released by a Canadian archive, there was a photograph taken on a reopening of a bridge. Now, what they did was they took a photograph of the entire crowd that was watching, and in the middle was this man that was completely out of place. From almost head to almost toe that you could see, it didn't line up. He is mysteriously out of place, holding clues that he may be a man out of time. Could this photo reveal evidence of a time traveler? The person in question has a unique hairstyle compared to those around him. His sunglasses seem futuristic for the 1940s. And under a hooded sweatshirt, he appears to be wearing a silk screen t-shirt, 20 years before the garment screen printer was even invented. But the most damning evidence of all could be what this strange man holds in his hands. What appears to be a modern camera, sleeker, more compact than anything of its day. So from head to toe, this gentleman just did not fit the time frame that the photograph was taken. Now, it was put on the internet by this archive, not expecting the reaction from the public. It spread like wildfire through the internet as proof that time travel exists. But who is he? Perhaps this is a question that could only be answered by a fellow time traveler. Seattle attorney Andrew Basiago claims to have traveled through time and space as a participant in a secret government program. Recruited as a child, Basiago supports his time travel declaration with this evidence, a photograph taken in 1863, which he claims shows him as a boy at the Gettysburg Address. According to Basiago, in the late 1970s, the CIA partnered with DARPA to develop a top secret jump room in El Segundo, California. The alleged facility enables humans to bend the space-time continuum at will. This device would have allowed instantaneous travel outside our planet and even through time itself. If his claims are true, the CIA not only experimented with, but built operable time machines. This would allow an unrivaled power to control the destiny of the human race. While it may sound like science fiction, there is evidence that the U.S. government did obtain the technology and that it came from the same source as our modern rocketry science, Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. Many people believe that the ultimate Wunderwaffe, the ultimate superweapon of the Nazi regime would have been time travel. 
Imagine if Adolf Hitler and all of the people around him were able to achieve such a piece of technology. Imagine what that could do in respect to the war itself. Coming up next, the most shocking tale of Hitler's time machine isn't when it disappeared, but when it reappeared 20 years later. Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. If possible, time travel would change the very nature of our reality. The power to control history is the power to control the present and the future. Could we prevent it from falling into the wrong hands? Or is it already too late? Unsealed Case File, The Nazi Bell. Toward the end of World War II, Allied forces were invading Germany. Nazi airfields were bombed beyond repair. Hitler was seeking technology to launch aircraft not dependent on runways. What he got may have turned into the most powerful weapon in history, a device known as Die Glocke, or the Bell. After the war, an underground research facility was discovered. It was carved nearly 1,000 kilometers into the Sudeten Mountains. In these caverns, some believe Hitler's army developed his ultimate wonder weapon. The Glocke was purportedly a bell-shaped device that stood up to 15 feet tall. And it's been said that five of Hitler's top scientists may have died while working on that project. And those sacrifices mean that Hitler thought he was onto something. And here was the technology that used counter-rotating cylinders of a very heavy metal, liquid metal, called red mercury. And by spinning them, by counter-rotating them at furiously high speeds, it generated an intense field of radioactivity. And that became the power source for these weapons, counter-rotating fields of mercury. Experts believe Dick Locke may have originally been designed to power the flytrap, an alleged launch pad for experimental Nazi aircraft. Reports say that the flytrap was used to launch anti-gravity aircraft. If the Nazis had actually developed anti-gravity aircraft, there's no way the Allies would have been able to keep up. But some believe De Glocke may have had a greater purpose for the Nazis, one that could make them the most unstoppable army in the history of time. Some of the stories about this device describe that it had a mirror on top of it that allegedly allowed one to see images from the past. It is theorized De Glocke would need to generate 100 million watts of electricity, enough to warp electrogravitational fields, thus creating an opening in time. One of the theories about De Glocke as a time travel piece of technology is that it would create a torsion field around the Nazi bell. Whatever this piece of technology was, it would create this torsion field or this energy bubble, and then it would actually alter the four dimensions in the unified field theory. We know the three dimensions that you and I talk, walk, and interact in, but the fourth dimension being time itself that what this torsion field does in conjunction with the Nazi bell is distort all of that and allow us to go forwards and backwards in time to change history. If this is possible, Hitler would have at his disposal a time machine. How would it have traveled in time? By creating vortices, they could shoot themselves through, pull space time around them. So operate off the assumption that the Nazi bell was a time machine and Hitler was able to actually create it. If he could just go into this object and go back to any point in time that he would want to, would be um, unstoppable. He can, in essence, do whatever he wanted, save Nazi Germany and really fulfill his world domination desire. But in 1945, the Nazi regime was defeated. We will gain the inevitable triumph, so help us God. Before his death, Hitler allegedly ordered the Bell's destruction. Was the world's first time machine lost in the fog of war? Or was it used as the Nazis' final escape? In December 1965, 
Over 20 years after Die Glocke disappeared, a strange bell-shaped craft heavy with radioactivity and glowing blue swept over the American border from Canada over Michigan over Ohio making long S curves and slowly coming to a controlled crash landing outside of Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. Witnesses interviewed by the local papers reported a large crashed object nearly identical in description to the Nazi bell. They also claimed that a group of American soldiers arrived on the scene. Using a flatbed truck, the soldiers are said to have loaded the object and taken it away. Almost instantly, a group, a unit of American soldiers who wore no insignia and came with a flatbed truck were there to retrieve this object and take it away. People were warned, keep your mouth shut. Don't talk about this. Could this tale confirm the true purpose of Die Glocke? Did Die Glocke disappear in time, landing 20 plus years later in Pennsylvania and then being taken to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, where for all we know, it sits there today, our own American time machine. Coming up next, the incredible story of an unlikely encounter with humans from the future and the shocking message they left behind. Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Could the human race really discover how to travel through time? And if they could, have they done so already? History has left tantalizing clues that time travel is possible. One piece of evidence that many claim is proof of time travel are ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics that on the walls of some Egyptian temples and in their artwork are symbols that actually represent what we would call today as airplanes, as helicopters, as blimps, as pieces of technology that they didn't have in ancient Egypt, and yet they were drawing it on their walls. Many ask, how did they know? Is this proof that they themselves were able to travel through time, maybe see the 21st century technology that they chronicled on a temple wall? Was that technology able to travel back in time? I mean, there's a lot of theories on what it could mean. But even more compelling is a message seemingly brought to us from the future. On December 26th, 1980, security personnel from RAF Bentwaters in the UK went out into Rendlesham Forest to investigate a series of lights where radar said an aircraft might have gone down. Upon entering the forest, Sergeant Jim Penniston and his partner, John Burroughs, encounter a strange aircraft that lands right before their eyes. They approach the craft, and Sergeant Penniston places his hand on the surface. As he does, Penniston is frozen while a mysterious code is beamed into his mind. A telepathic communication. I had an explosion of white light uh, where I couldn't see, I was blinded. And I uh, started seeing ones and zeros flashing. I mean, it was like inside my uh, mind's eye. Penniston is shaken by his contact with the craft and the vision it leaves behind. But even more incredible, John Burroughs maintains a different memory of the event entirely. I do not remember seeing Jim walk around the craft. I do not remember touching the craft. What I clearly remember was we got close to something, and the next thing I know, it, was, it appeared to go up into the sky and then shoot out towards the coast. Afterwards, the two soldiers realize that the times on their synchronized watches are off by almost 45 minutes. When John Burroughs and Jim Penniston returned to base, it transpired that more time had elapsed than they realized. Moreover, there was discrepancy in their wristwatches. Time, it seemed, not only had run on, but had maybe run at different speeds for them. Now, this takes us to some quite extraordinary territory, but when you talk to both John and Jim, and indeed to the people who looked at this case, some quite extraordinary theories are being bounced around, ideas of time travel. How could the contact with this strange craft cause a bend in time? According to Penniston, 
the answer is hidden within the coded message. For decades, this series of ones and zeros remained a mystery. But 30 years after the incident, Jim Burroughs was examining the code and realized what Penniston had received. As we were going through the book, he came to some pages that had zeros and ones on it. I looked at it and I said, these are binary codes. The team had the code deciphered, revealing a shocking message. Exploration of humanity, then latitude and longitude coordinates, continuous for planetary advance. Peniston had long suspected that the UFO he had seen in the woods was alien in origin, but the coordinates within the code indicated a different explanation. They fell on the location of a forgotten island off the coast of Ireland, known as High Brazil. High Brazil has sometimes been dubbed Celtic Atlantis. It's a, a sort of lost land, a mythical country, as it were, that some believed was the site of an advanced civilization. According to legends, those who have seen High Brazil reported a land filled with an advanced and wealthy civilization whose architecture consisted of golden towers and majestic domes. What Jim Penniston initially believed to be a message from the stars turned out to be a mysteriously earthly communication. And the most shocking detail was the postscript on this code. The message on the page says date of origin 8100. Date of origin 8100. Could this signature be telling us the year these travelers had come from? Why would a race that traveled thousands of light years play hide and seek with us, give us a binary message, and why is it in English? It doesn't point to alien. What I seen was a craft that was us from the future. This is not about UFOs. What uh, I believe had happened, what I seen was a craft that was us from the future. Time travelers from the future. We may not yet understand their communication, but if Jim Penniston is correct, this cryptic message confirms that mankind has survived well into the future and that we have harnessed the power to control time itself. Coming up next, if mankind is destined to master time travel, when will it happen? The world's largest particle physics lab may have just found the answer. Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Albert Einstein once theorized that traveling near the speed of light would change how a body moved through time relative to another. It was once thought impossible, but the world's largest particle physics laboratory may have just found a way. On September 21st, 2011, the European lab known as CERN announced a subatomic particle that travels faster than the speed of light. But are we ready for such a discovery? One small mistake in the past, or even knowing our future, could change everything. One false move and the human race might never even evolve. We must be careful with the power this new discovery could give us. Otherwise, mankind may not have a future at all. Unsealed. Conspiracy Files. <laughs>